Hi, I'm Dr. Donnie Wilson, and today I want to talk about HPV, or human papilloma virus, and specifically the five foods to stop eating if you're working on fending off HPV. Now, here's the thing is that we are most all exposed to HPV virus at some point in our lives. That includes men and women, and certain strains of HPV are associated with cancer risk. So, to find out that HPV is positive, which often happens when women go to get a pap smear and more and more often are being tested for HPV and being told that it's positive, it can be quite scary. And so that might be why you're listening to this video, freaking out, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm HPV positive or HPV keeps showing up positive or even that HPV is causing abnormal cells on your pap smear or worse, and you feel like you just want to get out of this situation and get rid of this virus as fast as possible. And I understand, I help thousands of women every year and to do exactly that in my practice. I'm a naturopathic doctor and midwife, and I've been helping women to address HPV virus for over 23 years. And one of the best ways to do that, to actually help your body, your immune system protect you from this virus is by making dietary changes. Now. Of course, the conventional medical system and most medical practitioners are not trained in nutrition, and so they are not aware of the potential of dietary changes to help your body fend off HPV. But I'm here to tell you and report back to you from all of the patients who've worked with me that making dietary changes absolutely can make a difference, and women every week are coming back to me telling me how their PAP is now negative and the HPV is negative. And not only that, but it's staying negative over years of period of time. So this is why I feel so motivated to be able to share this information. I have a whole protocol that I use in my practice, but today I wanna to focus on these five foods that I see make the biggest difference by when women are able to take them out of their diet for at least a period of time until the HPV goes to negative. So the first food on that list is really something that's usually an ingredient in foods, and that's sugar. And when I say sugar, I'm referring to refined sugar, like a spoonful of white sugar or brown sugar. Um, that's the kind of sugar that we're talking about. I'm not talking about sugar necessarily from natural sugar, say from fruits and vegetables. We wanna have some fruits and vegetables in our diet. But refined sugar can reduce immune system function for hours after you consume it. So if you're having sugar even once a day, a spoonful of sugar or equivalent to that, then it's going to be reducing your immune system's ability to protect you from all different infections, including HPV. Now, just imagine if you're having sugar in your diet multiple different times of day, it's continually reducing your immune function. And a lot of times sugar is in our diet and our beverages without us realizing it. So I encourage you to take a closer look at the foods you're eating, even your protein shakes, even beverages that you think might be healthy. It's worth it to take a look at the ingredients. And if you see sugar or sugar cane, or sometimes sugar comes in as other names like dextrose and sucrose, these all mean sugar. So if there's sugar in your food, in your sometimes it's in processed food, sometimes it might be food that you're grabbing on the go, um, or your morning um, coffee or latte may be containing sugars. These sugars are reducing your immune function and making you susceptible to HPV as well that, as well as other health issues. So number one is to start really paying attention to sugar and start reducing it in your daily intake. Okay, number two to me is gluten. And this is after years. Remember, I've been at this for a couple decades and I do very specific testing with my patients to identify issues with gluten, specifically gluten sensitivity and in some cases, we're also testing for celiac disease if we see severe symptoms and severe signs of gluten issues. And what I consistently find over and over again, case after case with HPV and abnormal pap smears is gluten sensitivity, which actually gluten sensitivity is over, it's one out of four of us 
at the very least, I think it's actually more common than not, have gluten sensitivity because humans in general just don't digest gluten very well. Gluten is in rye, barley, spelt, wheat, and anything that has wheat in it, not just whole wheat, but it could be anything made from wheat or rye, barley, spelt has gluten in it. And so you might be getting gluten again numerous times a day. If you're having something made from wheat or containing gluten for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're getting gluten multiple times a day. And gluten for everyone is inflammatory. Gluten is known in research to cause something called leaky gut, which is damage to the intestinal cells. And this is really important when it comes to HPV. And you might be wondering why, because you're like, well, the HPV is in the vagina. It also, by the way, can exist in the anal rectal area and oral area. Um, but most times we're identifying it in the vaginal area. And But yes, there is a connection between your digestion and your vaginal area. And so if we, if you're consuming gluten and it's causing inflammation and causing damage to your intestinal cells, that's causing inflammation to circulate around your whole body, including to the vaginal area. Gluten also disrupts the bacteria in the digestive tract. This is well established in research. And I can share the references. When we have disrupted bacteria in our digestion, it's known to disrupt the microbiome vaginally. And this is another way that gluten makes us susceptible to HPV. So you'll notice in my language, I'm talking about susceptibility to HPV. It's not just about exposure. Remember, most all of us are exposed to this virus, but it only has the opportunity to cause abnormal cells in a certain percentage of the population. What's different about that percentage of the population? Well, one thing could be that those people are more susceptible to inflammatory changes and microbiome changes due to gluten exposure. And so what I find is, well, what I recommend with, with women who work with me in my practice is we test for food sensitivities and find out if gluten is an issue. And then we start eliminating gluten from their diet. And we start to see major changes in their health, not just eliminating HPV, but so many things improve about their health, including their digestion and their skin and their hair and their hormones and their energy and their focus and their sleep and so much more. So yes, you could just start to eliminate gluten from your diet. I think that's a good place to start. And then if you really need to know more, I would recommend doing a food sensitivity panel. And I can put a link below to the test that I recommend. Hi, I'm Dr. Donnie, and I want to invite you to attend my next Heal HPV Worldwide Workshop. This is an online event that's going to be three days where we're going to be able to go into detail about HPV or human papillomavirus, what it is, how to identify it on your pap smear, what your pap smear results mean, and really how to help you transform your health and your body so that you can protect yourself from this virus that's associated with cancer risk. I know that you're not hearing this from your regular doctor's office, and I know that you're probably feeling really afraid and really alone and potentially even ashamed at finding out that you are testing positive for HPV. And I'm here after more than 23 years of helping women to be able to share success stories with you and for you to know for sure that it's possible to protect yourself from this virus, prevent it from causing abnormal cells and actually get to freedom from HPV virus once and for all. I really believe that everyone should have this information. And so that's why I put on this worldwide workshop and I'd love for you to join me. It's something that you can find at the link below and sign up and join me today. I'll see you there. Okay, so number three, and this also comes back to the food sensitivity panel and what I see as major food problems for women who are experiencing HPV, and that is dairy products. Anything made from cow milk, except from butter. Butter usually is okay, but anything else made from cow milk, from yogurts, cheeses, even whey protein powders, is an issue because of the proteins made from dairy. Not the sugar. I mean, the sugar in 
dairy is called lactose and some people are not able to digest lactose and may have digestive issues. That's not so much the issue for HPV. With HPV, the issue is the dairy proteins, casein and whey. And so if you're consuming dairy products, even if you're just having milk in your coffee or even if you're just having cheese every so often, it could be an issue when it comes to HPV because it's inflammatory. So it also is causing inflammation in the digestion, which then spreads throughout your body and it makes you susceptible to infections. A lot of times people who have dairy sensitivity also are prone to sinus infections, but absolutely can make you more prone to HPV. And this is the thing, then the HPV, which normally our bodies can clear and get rid of, it sticks around longer and it has more chance to cause abnormal cells. Okay, so sugar, gluten, dairy, and the fourth one, which I think might surprise you, is egg. Now, a lot of people don't realize that they're reacting to egg, and I'm not just talking about egg yolks, I'm talking about egg whites. And the issue is that once leaky gut exists, once the intestinal cells are not as healthy as they should be, which happens when we're exposed to stress and toxins and gluten, we end up with leaky gut. And then eggs, which we all think are healthy and we're eating eggs, most people, a lot of women I talk to are eating eggs almost every single day. The eggs are leaking through the intestinal lining undigested and that egg protein is then triggering an immune response because the immune system thinks it needs to protect you from this foreign protein. That's what our immune system does. It protects us from a foreign protein. So when egg protein comes through, the immune system's busy trying to protect you from it, and it's not doing as good of a job protecting you from the HPV virus. So one way to know for sure if you're reacting to egg or egg whites in particular is to do the food sensitivity test I recommend, which is from a lab that I've been working with for many years. I have cross-tested it um, with other labs. I'm constantly reviewing other food sensitivity panels. And what I find is that this particular lab gives us the clearest results, the clearest information to know for sure if you need to eliminate eggs from your diet. Now, I want to make sure while we're talking about dietary changes for you to understand that it's not going to be necessary for you to avoid these foods forever. A lot of people worry, oh my gosh, how am I going to avoid these foods the rest of my life in order to protect myself from HPV? But that's not necessary because once we help your body to heal, once we help your body to heal leaky gut, restore healthy digestive function and microbiome and healthy immune function, then most cases you're able to add these foods back into your diet. So I'm not saying suggesting that you need to avoid these foods forever. I'm suggesting that these are foods that are common in our diet that are actually making us more susceptible to HPV virus. And if we can identify that specifically for you, and eliminate those foods from your diet while we heal your digestion and heal your body and rebalance your immune system, you're going to be better able to protect yourself from HPV going forward, even if you reintroduce those foods to your diet. Okay, got it? So number five, and this is not exactly a food, it's more a beverage, and that's alcohol. What I find is even women who've been following my protocol for months, because oftentimes women who follow my protocol, even within three months, will find that HPV goes to negative. But sometimes if it hasn't gone away within six months and I go back and we start digging and we say, well, what is still making this person susceptible to HPV? What we discover is that they've been still drinking alcohol. And alcohol, and we're talking, it could be either... Uh, alcoholic beverage, li liquor, it could be beer, it could be wine. Um, these, all these different forms of alcohol reduce immune function. So if you have, sometimes if you have one drink a week, it's probably not enough to be an issue. But if you're having more than one alcoholic drink a week, so if you're finding yourself having, let's say, two glasses of wine or having one or two glasses of wine more than once a week, then it could be making you more susceptible to HPV. And it's when these women finally do make the commitment to taking alcohol out of their 
diet out of their life for a period of time, sometimes three to six months, along with everything else in my protocol, including supplements and suppositories, they finally are able to get HPV to go away. And again, my goal is to help your immune system learn how to protect you from HPV. And so once it does that, then it doesn't mean you're going to have to forever avoid alcohol. But what you often find is how good you feel without these foods and alcohol and sugar in your diet. And you end up realizing, wow, I feel so much better. My energy is better. My mood is better. My sleep is better. My skin is better. Everything is better. Why would I want to go back to eating and drinking all the things I was eating and drinking before that were making me not feel so good? And so then we go into maintenance mode and we figure out what are you going to continue now that you've really transformed not only your health related to HPV, but you've transformed really your life and you've become empowered about protecting yourself from HPV related cancer, as well as many other health issues. Then you can reevaluate what do you want to bring back into your diet and your life, even potentially on an occasional basis, but knowing that if you're the one who gets to decide what you're eating. You're the one who gets to decide what you're drinking. And you're the one who gets to be in control of your health and your ability to protect yourself from HPV um, as well as other health issues. Thank you so much for joining me. If this video was helpful, I'd be happy to hear about it. Please like and subscribe and definitely join me for the next video where I'll be soon sharing more tips about protecting yourself from HPV. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to How Humans Heal. If you liked this episode, leave a rating and a review. And for more resources, visit drdonnie.com.